kind of a chilly, brisk morning down here in Grants Pass. Let's cut some things out and make some. Let's go. Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. My husband, Matt, we work together on all our projects. Today, we're going to show you how to do a jagged edge table runner. So Matt, mm. tell us about the Excellent, fabrics. Donna. Excellent selection. Uh, Robert Kaufman Sparkle, I've done some projects with these before and it is it, outstanding colors, outstanding design. I'm ready to get started, let's go. Yeah, I've got about six inches of fabric or so that I've cut off the bolts here, just really rough cuts. And they're looking good. And that's all you need. You could do this out of scraps you have at home or various fabrics that you have. Very simple. All right, I'm gonna iron these things up. When I iron, I just want to look the fabric over entirely and see what's going on um, in terms of wrinkles, keeping it straight. That one looks very nice. These all came off the bolt in pretty good shape. Not a lot of wrinkles and, and, and fabrics will totally vary. And sometimes you spend a lot of time ironing and sometimes you don't need to, but I like to do both sides to get a nice crisp finish, easier to cut. I'm going to cut these into four inch squares for the pattern. Um, I'm going to be cutting, my first cut will be left handed today. I like to get these lined up and what I mean by that, these fabrics lined up, is when I stack them, I stack them relatively close to each other for my first cut and I'll show you in a minute why I do that. So I've stacked these three close and I've got these two right here relatively close to each other on top of each other as compared to this is kind of off, I don't care about that. And as I said, these are four inch cuts. So, I'm going to get started here. Okay, I've got my four inch strips cut from the fold to the selvage now on these fabrics. I'm going to turn my mat the other way and I'm going to cut these into four inch squares and they'll be ready for sewing. All right, I'm going to drop these off now at the sewing machine. We're looking really good here. I like the way the cutting went. The ironing was great. Take these over to Donna. We have all the cut squares. Now I'm going to lay them out in the order in which I'm going to sew them. All right, we've got three on the end. This is kind of trial and error, so I'm going to lay them out and see if it looks balanced. I may have to move them around a little bit. All right, I've got all the pieces laid out for the jagged edge runner top. Now, I've kind of alternated colors. I traded spots with things till I got it just the way I like it. I have seven different fabrics. The total runner only takes 43 squares. I used no more than eight. So this print right here, I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's why I've got extra pieces here because I cut 10 of each piece. Some of the fabrics like this one here, I only used three, but it's right in the middle so it is highlighted. So remember, total of 43, but a nice variety. My first row has just one block, the next row has three, this row has five. So I'm going to start sewing these rows, these blocks into rows. Let's finger press our seams away from the middle. Finger press them to the outside. Now we're gonna pick up the next row. So I'm just going to pick it up in order here. Take it right to my machine like this and sew it in that order. Here's the next row. The first seam allowance away, finger press it away. The next is going the opposite direction. We're basically going to alternate the way these are going. So we're going out, in, in, out. We want all of these on the outside to be going away. 
Now, it's important when you pick your pieces up to keep them in the right order and also to keep them turned the way you want them to go because mine have a definite pattern, a stripe, so keep them going the way you want them to go. Don't get them turned. Now, we'll pick up the next row. We're just going to repeat with all the rest of the rows. So this is the last row of three, and then we have a single one there. You can see how they can fit here. Now let me show you something on the seam allowances. On every row of five, all the seam allowances go oh, that way, that way, that way, that way. You do that on every single row. Every one I turn around, that's the way the seam allowances are facing. Now, if we were stitching together rows like this, my seam allowances would all be going the same way. But because we're moving this down, the effect is that seam allowance is that way, that seam allowance is that way, making this intersection nice and flat. Now, all we have to do is sew the rows together. We're going to sew this one onto here and this one onto here. So we're going to start with this right on top of there, and we're going to stitch that together. So this one's going to fit right here, and again, my seam allowances are already going in alternate directions, so we just have to put this on top of here, line everything up, and stitch from here to here. So you can see this is going to fit right here. This row is going to flip over here. Now I know it's a little odd to have this row longer than that row, but that's how we're getting our jaggeds. So flip it right over, match your seam allowances up, take it to the machine just like that. Now it's important that your seams match up, so open this up, make sure they match up. Since that seam allowance is going that way, and the bottom one is going that way, you can really feel with your fingers if they're matching. All the way down you want to match those seams. So you have nice crisp points coming together. So here's our last row of three. It's going to go right there. Now we'll stitch it on. We're ready to put the last block on. So it's going to go right here. We're going to flip it over. So we're centering it up there. It actually is meeting up with the seam allowances on the back side there. And you'll notice when I start and stop sewing the rows here, you can just veer on to your quarter inch. And when you come to the end, you can just veer off. All right, the top is all done. Now I'm going to take it to the ironing board and show you how to iron the seam allowances. It's very important to iron the seam allowances in the proper order. So we need all the seam allowances going toward the outside edge because we're going to stitch front to back and we need the seam allowances going that way. So all around the edge here, I want my seam allowances, both of these, going towards the outside. So I'm going to go all the way around the runner and just make sure those are going towards the outside. That whole one goes towards the outside. So this runner, it's not going to have binding it's going to be flipped using the envelope method. So if my seam allowance here was facing this way, I would not be able to come around here and sew it front to back. That's why I need it facing that way. First two seams can be completely towards the outside. This seam allowance and every other one of the five rows has to start off going to the left and then be flipped going to the right so that we can have it laying flat here. So we're going to go like this, and somewhere in this last block here, we're going to just flip it over and iron it flat. So the seam allowance to the right, keep going right, keep going right, somewhere in this last block, flip it that way. Last long seam, we're going to iron to the right, all the way down here to this last square, flip it over. Now these last two 
can go the whole way to the right. Now if you look at the whole runner now, all around the edges, all of the seam allowances are facing towards the outside. That way we can stitch a quarter inch from the edge and be able to have a nice seam allowance all the way around the runner. Now I'm going to flip it over and just give it one last steam press so it's really, really flat. Now remember, the straight grains are going like this. So when you press these seams, you want to press this way and this way, not this way because you tend to stretch the fabrics. So remember, so iron with the grain. I've got the whole runner top here. It's about 47 inches long. So I've cut a backing that's 48 inches long. I've cut a piece of batting. I use the Hobbs 80-20, 80% polyester, 20% cotton, but you can really use any batting you like. And I've got this laid out all flat and I'm just gonna pin it. So I'm gonna put some pins in on every other point so I can stitch it front to back. Now we're going to sew the runner front to back. We're going to use a quarter inch seam and we're going to go right along the edge of the patchwork. Doesn't matter where you start. Quarter inch seam and you're going to pivot at every point. So you have to go kind of slow. Pivot. Quarter inch seam. Now when you come to this intersection here, you see the two stitching lines? You want to sew right inside that. So I'm exaggerating here, but pretend these are your stitching lines. You want your stitching line right now to be just inside the other stitching lines. Not that big, but a little bit inside. Pivot. So don't try to stitch right on top of your previous stitching line. Try to stitch inside it a hair. So you can see me moving the wheel by hand because I want to go really slow here. So sometimes you have to do a couple extra stitches by hand. So just do this all the way around, all the way around the runner. You may notice that I'm sewing pretty fast on this. And that's because I've made literally thousands of these. We used to sell these runners, the pre-made runners. We would make the runners. So I don't want you to feel like you have to sew this fast. This is just the natural speed that I go. So you need to sew at what speed is comfortable and correct for you. Now I'm coming to the end here. I'm not leaving any opening at all. I'm just going right over my stitching there. There's no opening at all. And we are going to finish off there. Now, I don't have any way of flipping it right now. So I am going to take out some of my patchwork stitching and flip it through there. In our next video, we'll finish up the Jagged Edge Table Runner. Thanks for watching.